Hi everyone, it's Margaret Manning here with 60 and Me. Thank you for being here today. I have a fun video today on a topic that I think will interest you. Um, many people over the last year have spent quite a bit of time thinking about their possessions, what they own, how they can downsize, and especially clothing. I think as we have been inside focused perhaps on comfort rather than fashion, we have started to make decisions about letting things go. And one of our bloggers, um, Andrea Flammer, wrote this great article on the question was, was, do your clothes spark joy in your life after 50, after 60? And should they? Should that even be a consideration in the clothes that you that you purchase? And I know for one, I've actually been uh, looking a lot at my closet recently, taking up things that I've never, haven't worn in a year and thinking, you know, I, I, even if I wasn't in a lockdown mode with this pandemic, I probably would not have kept those clothes. I would not have used them. They're just not sparking joy in my life. So um, she gives some suggestions in her video, in her article, and I'm gonna talk a bit about those topics to, to, to consider whether something should um, you know, be in your life, in your closet, in your world, um, and how to make that judgment and what to do. And really that question about should, it, should your clothes spark joy, is that the criteria? So she is, like many people, a Marie Kondo fanatic. She has fallen in love with this woman, um, I believe she's from Japan, who has um, you know, written a book on, it was called The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. And you know, not just clothing, but your house in general, and how you can you know, just really take time to look at what you have, what you've accumulated, as we have over the years, and let go of things that are just not you anymore, that are just not bringing you happiness, and she uses the word joy. So she has a television series, which um, uh, Andrea was ref is referring to in her article, and it's a really cool series. I've only watched a couple of episodes, but basically what she does is, you, you may know, she goes into someone's house, a couple, maybe a, a couple by themselves or with children, you, you know, usually complex situations, not always big houses, but just places where there is an accumulation of stuff. And she goes through a process with them of, um, of downsizing, of helping them to organize, tidy up, and find joy in their things um, once again. So the first thing that she often starts with is clothes because we've got a lot of clothes that we've accumulated over the years. And so she starts people with that project. And what she says, and I know maybe some of you know this, but it's take everything out of your closets, everything out of your closets, your drawers, your boxes, your storage, everywhere. Just put it all in a big pile on the floor. Now, if you haven't done this before, I actually didn't do it quite this way, but I've been doing like drawers and, and areas at a time. But she says, put all your clothes, just put everything in a great big pile on the floor. And then sit back and have a good cry because you'll be amazed how much you've got. And this is one of the things that people always say, they go, oh my goodness, I had no idea that I had that much stuff no idea and it's just piled all in front of you to show you what you've bought what you've treasured and i know that i've been had periods in in my life you probably have too where you've gone shopping for other reasons than needing the clothes <laughs> there's something emotional about purchasing something about treating yourself about maybe buying something for a special occasion maybe it never happened but um what i love about marie kondo in the show that i shows that i have seen is that she is not harsh about it you know, she doesn't go, oh my gosh, what have you got here? How did you do this? She's saying, you know, she's never saying get rid of that. She's just saying, let's stay with it. Now, a lot of things represent loss, maybe something that you bought before you were married or when before something happened that changed your life, which happens in our 50s and 60s and, and 70s. And, you know, you, I, I kind of live with those memories and that grief or loss and just stay with it. And I think another thing that she mentions, uh, which, I, which Marie Kondo is very sensitive to, I don't know her background, but I think when people have not had a lot of money in their lives, they tend to accumulate things and say, I made it, I did it. I accumulated all this incredible stuff. And that somehow reaffirms that you're not like you were when you were a child, that you didn't have just that one coat from Sears and Roebuck, that you have now jackets in different colors and you've made it, you've made it. So. How do you decide what to keep? So this is the challenging job that Marie Kondo sets out to help her her clients with and her and with her books and so on. And you know, with that deep respect that she has for the things that people have purchased, she says, you know, does it spark joy? And for Marie Kondo, this is the important question. Does this item, does this thing you're holding in your hand, does it inspire joy in your life? 
maybe maybe the clothes made you at some point feel beautiful or sexy or attractive or interesting or unique. Maybe they were part of a transformation that you went through in your life from one role to another. Um, and maybe they did bring joy at that time. That was, you know, why you bought them, presumably, or maybe there was some other, other reason. But maybe some clothes and some things are are made not to be worn again. You know, maybe they're just made to be for that moment and then you let them go, let them take their take wing and, and and leave and go to someone else where they it will have a have a different kind of relationship. Now, um Andrea talks about uh, her passion right now for comfort. And she's she's a fashion stylist, so she honestly gets this and she's you know trying really hard to um just filter through the reasons that we buy certain types of clothes and her passion is for longevity and quality. And she tends to buy things that are going to last a while, that are going to give her joy longer term. And and, and, and if she finds something that, that she doesn't, you know, doesn't match that criteria anymore, she'll say, you know, this has sentimental value. This has a special value that I, I, is important to me, but it doesn't bring me joy. It brings me a memory. It brings me um, yes, yeah, some association that's important, and that's okay too. So what should you be thinking about? Well, she talks in all her the articles that she writes for 60 and Me about having some basics, you know, having the colors that are like the, the, the black, gray, navy, taupe, the, the ones that are your kind of basic outfit, your, your uniform in a way. And then choosing, I mean, those things you, I think, do bring joy because you can wear them anytime, any place. You can accent them with different colors you can um, accessorize and they kind of are the you know this the, the joyful element in, to, to, as the base for your for your wardrobe so does it um do you need it i'm gonna ask these questions do you need it do you wear it currently have you worn it like in the last few months does it reflect the person that you want to be now yeah i mean you may have a lot of pieces that are even really high value but do they represent the person that you are now? One thing that I've actually um, has helped me a great deal, and I know I've spoken about this many times on my, my, my channel and my videos, I live in a super small space. I'm in one room, I have a studio, and I have a very small closet. In fact, that cupboard behind me that a lot of people always ask about, um, the storage boxes as well, my, my room is very tightly organized, and behind that little floral um, design behind me there is a cupboard. And in that cupboard are shelves. I put um, extra food, that I put um, cosmetics, that I put um, books, just things that I need. And then the other side is a very small closet. And then underneath I have some drawers where I put, um, you know, t-shirts and things that don't need to be hung up. But honestly, having a small space is actually kind of a cool, you know, place, th I think to start with. Now, when you think about the things that need to go that don't match your personality, that don't match your lifestyle at the moment, maybe even not the right colors. You know, ask yourself that is, well, the obvious ones. What's uncomfortable? Does it fit? Remember those clothes that you purchased? I've got a few that just didn't quite fit around the waist or a little too tight on the bottom. And you bought it anyway because the pattern was beautiful or the material was great or it was on sale. <laughs> Remember those decisions? But anyway, if you haven't, um, you know, got some, if it doesn't fit comfortably, doesn't, you know, then just let it go. Don't, don't put it in the, in the, even in back in the, in the pile after you've sorted through that big, huge pile. If you've got shoes that don't fit you or that you just know you're never going to wear those heels again, there is someone out there right now that could really, really use them. So maybe this is an opportunity to let those go as well. If you've got things, um, I'm making some notes here because I want to remember these. If you have got things that have sentimental value, I think I've only got one thing that has sentimental value for me that I probably should discard, and that is a bracelet. And it was given to me in a special way, and it's just too much for me to give away right now, but I will keep that. I have absolutely no clothes that have a sentimental value to me, that, that, you know, for, that I'm keeping just for sentimental purposes. I think there's a difference. A lot of my clothes do have sentimental value, but I'm I'm not keeping anything just because of that. And it's hard though, or anything that you're sick of wearing, <laughs> anything that you've just worn a gazillion times. I have some leggings. I used to wear leggings quite a bit. I just gave them all away. I never wear them. 
I never wear them. And I kept them because for some reason I thought that I was eventually going to become too skinny or something and I was going to wear these, <laughs> these beautiful leggings and that I just don't do that anymore. Excuse the noise, by the way. I've got to leave the window open today, so it's just a little bit noisy in the background, but I hope it's not distracting. Anywho, um, in terms of jewelry, things that slide off your arms that, you know, you never wear, that you, you put it on and then five minutes or ten minutes or an hour later you're taking it off. Um, you know, again, one thing that um, uh, Andrea suggests is take a picture. You know, take a picture of that thing that has sentimental value. Put it in a, you know, put it in your sort of picture drawer where you've got all those precious things. And, you know, things that you bought on vacation. Remember those things that you bought that were great when the sun was shining and it was, you know, were in a bathing suit. And then you think, hmm, really don't wear that anymore. But, you know, I think that um, it's just, it's just time, in my opinion, to let things go and to ask that question. You know, does it bring joy? Maybe, in your opinion, it doesn't have to. Maybe there's other reasons for keeping things. But I think for the most part, if we can ask if it's bringing joy and, and you know, sort of satisfaction and, and, you know, just passion into our lives, keep it. But if not, let it go. Have you been through this conversation with yourself? I'll leave your comments below. I really would like to know what clothes you have that really spark joy. Maybe one piece of clothing that you absolutely adore and how you would never let it go for, for whatever reason. I'd love to know. And maybe why you love them. That would be a good story to tell. Okay, everybody, well, have a wonderful day wherever you are. And you're, I'm getting something out of your closet today that brings joy, that sparks joy. And thank you, Andrea, for this article, for being such a great contributor to our community. And we will talk to you all later. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye.